What's up, future fighters? Zach Zach here. I got a deck profile for you guys. This deck profile is for Legend World, specifically my Asgard build. So, I guess a few disclaimers. My Asgard build is weird. I'm still trying to work through the kinks, but people were requesting it. And Asgard and Legend World in general is probably my favorite world to use. Um, not my favorite world to compete with yet, but I'm trying to work things through. So, we'll get started with the deck profile first. We have three copies of the size three. Now, let me get this clear for you guys. 10 4 10. Ice Blade Astrolux. So, he has a call cost of four gauge. When this card is discarded from your hand, you may pay two gauge. If you do, call this card from your drop zone without paying its cast cost. Um, this is kind of the crux of the deck so much that I kind of regret putting it three. So this could be a four very easily and probably very soon. But he is the defensive stall of this deck. This is what this card combined with my very favorite uh, spell card in this deck, damage control, is very good. Next is a new card from the set. Deity of, of Sun and Death, Bloody King. He is at 837 size 3. Call cost. Pay 2 gauge and put the top card of your deck into this card's soul. Act. Discard a card from your hand, which is the main focus of Asgard, to destroy a size 2 or less monster on your opponent's field. This card has soul guard. Um, this card is honestly more underwhelming than I hoped he had been. I mean, I thought he he looks like the other card that has penetrate, and man, if he had penetrate, this card would be amazing. But he doesn't. Um, the discard thing is is good, not great, and the fact that he has Soul Guard is also good. The, his size size 3 bulkiness is also very good, but he feels like he's missing something. If he had Penetrate or Double Attack, this card would be amazing, but he doesn't. But he still works very well for forcing out the Iowa Dolls, the Ice Blade Jokers, into getting into play. Uh, next, we start with our size 2. First, we play two copies of Secret Army of the... Of the Divine King, I don't know what this says, Night Shadow, uh, Voden Shadow. He is a 426 size 2. Call cost, pay to gauge. When this card enters the field, you may use one of the following abilities. Choose a weapon from your drop zone and equip it by paying its equip cost, or choose a spell with set from your drop zone and cast it by paying its cast cost. So I think ideally this was meant for the like the great spell Ragnarok deck to get Fumble Winter, but I use this card to kind of tutor damage control, or my weapon from the drop zone. He's very useful. The deck is very gauge reliant. I do play rune staff though, so I mean it's really easy to get gauge every turn. And this card is really clutch. Next we play four copies of the hero. Valkyrie Brilliant, Brihendahil. Brihendahil, blah, blah, blah. He's a five, or she is a five, two, three, size two, call cost. Pay one gauge, put the top card of your deck into this card's soul. Move and Soul Guard. Um, I love this card for its first turn plays. I love this card for move. And I love this card for Soul Guard. It's one gauge Soul Guard move. It's very good defensively. Um, it stops a lot of the OTKs that decks have by itself, being the two negates you generally need. Next, we play two copies of King of Four Zatlarog. <coughs> he comes into play, you get two gauge. I run this at two for those games. <coughs> Where I don't get my rune staff immediately. <coughs> I noticed that in my plays, the deck really failed pretty hard when I couldn't get a little bit extra gauge. And it, this card easily solved the problem. I mean, I had it at three for a while, but I bumped it down to two. Very good, very important for this gauge heavy deck. Next, we play two copies of a card that I think was also introduced in this last set Flame Giant. Suture. He's a 525, decently bulky, size 2. He has an act. Discard a card from your hand, very good for Asgard, to deal 1 damage to your opponent. You only play this once per turn. Um, I have clinched games with this card, being able to use that with the size 1 100 demon that fetches 2s from the drop. He's, it's very good for triggering like Ice Blade Joker, who is your buddy. But you'll see that this deck is pretty top heavy in terms of size 2s and 3s, so it makes it so I have very little size 1s in the deck. Next, we play three copies of the new size zero. Seventh uh, Omni Earth Lord, Count Don. He's a 4 1 1 size zero. Pretty bulky for a, or pretty strong for a size zero. He's an Omni Lord, Omni Lord attribute, and at the beginning of your turn, you may, if this card is in your drop zone, you may pay one life. If you do, call this card from your drop zone. Um, I love this card just, especially from the point of view that I, I can use 
my board to deal myself damage to get into simple guards. Um, that's what I enjoy the most. I don't have to take any of my opponent's damage unless I want to. We play four copies of Valkyrie All-Knowing, I would all. At 3-1-1, size 0, the cards you cast with Grace Spell cannot be negated. Um, not really important for this deck. But when this card is this card from your hand, put the top card of your deck into your gauge and draw a card. Um, I love this ability. This is really good for gauge excel on the turns you're trying to make plays. And you, this deck is extremely reliant on the card damage control itself. Next we play four copies of Ice Blade Joker. He's a 6-2-3 size 0. Call cost pay 3 gauge. If you discard this card from your hand, you may pay 1 gauge to call it from your drop zone. He's the buddy just because he's actually, he's pretty easy. I mean, if I get damage control, it's very easy to get out. Uh, and he's pretty easy to get out with having the five copies of cards that allows me to do things during my turn. Arguably, you could bump those cards up, but I think it's pretty good where it is. And rounding out creatures, we have three size ones, just three. Copies of Decklefar Demon Swordsman. Hi. He's a 4-2-2, size 1, call cost, pay 2 gauge. When this card enters the field, you may call a size 2 Legend World monster from your drop by paying its uh, call cost. So this is very clutch considering I have so many tech 2s basically. I can get lots of gauge pretty easily, or I can get the guy that deals the damage, I can get this to negate the cast cost, which is more or less unnecessary. I can get a, a better defensive shield, I can get a card that gets damage control or my weapon back. There's a lot of good things that this card is capable of doing, and usually it's, I think it's a pretty good way of generating advantage because basically pay two gauge and then some to get an, a car, uh, an extra card back, which I think is pretty good. Next we play four copies of the card Symbol Guard. Uh, with damage control, inevitably you will be discarding cards that don't do stuff. And with Count Dawn in the deck, it makes it super easy to justify playing this card at four because you can just deal yourself damage to get to six. So playing this card is really easy, and it goes well with Brethren Guard being able to let you, allow you to cast it for free. Next we play the spell Damage Control. So I talked about Damage Control a lot. Damage Control is a generic spell, shockingly enough, so you can be played in every deck. <coughs> Alright, Damage Control is a set spell. And he has the ability Counter Act. During your opponent's turn, discard a card from your hand. If you do, the next time you would be dealt damage to you this turn is reduced by 2. If the card you discard is a Battle Deity Romo, which it is a Battle Deity Robo, the next damage you would be dealt would be reduced by 4 instead. You may only use this ability once per turn. This card is really powerful in, well, people like to call it Disguard. I don't really like calling them Disguard because it seems like all Asgard is discarding. So, I mean, it's Asgard build. And I like to use damage control, especially for like the penetrate matchups, to use it in a, in a sense like a devil stigma per se, because your opponent declares an attack, you activate damage control, you call a new monster over your monster, they've lost their target, the attack doesn't penetrate you, it's pretty good, especially when you discard, so let's say you damage control 2 damage, you go into this giant wall, which is a 10-4-10, unless your opponent still has cards on the board that allow them for, to link attack for 10, the remaining attacks are more than likely not getting through. Very, he's a very good wall. So much that he used to be the buddy of his deck, but the zero came out way more often. Next is the card I play at four copies. Um, I don't really like this at four copies, even though it's your, your shield. Holy Grail. Uh, you only cast if you have an open center, which I almost never have. Nullify the attack. I play this for first turn plays mostly, and... Oddly enough, there was a time where I had a few more heroes, and I did play Excalibur in the deck with the size 2 lets me uh, fetch a weapon back, mostly because there, this, this deck is very defensive, so defensive that you get through most of your deck, and getting mo through most of my deck, it was pretty easy to get to Excalibur. It would be easy to play Excalibur, but a lot of times it never worked out that good, but I'll probably try. try try to play that dream again with some of the new support we have with fairies and whatnot. And then we play three copies of the Spell Negate, Brethren Guard. This is a pay two gauge to nullify or destroy a spell on the field. Um, this is very good. I'm um, in a defensive deck. A lot of the times in my matchups, I was kind of going one for one at the end where we were top deck drawing. 
and being able to know their spell for them to try and turn the game around allowed me to have a better shot at killing them. Uh, having my size 3 Astrolux push for game or keeping alive or like I link attack with my zero and Astrolux for six, they negate, or they, you know, shield, I negate the spell. This, this was the main win condition for the deck, unfortunately. Um, then I played two copies of a Cyro Guard because of the Penetrate matchup especially. It also helped for getting, ensuring that you had enough gauge to perform the plays that you wanted. This card is a cast cost, put a monster from your field into the drop, put the top card of your deck into the gauge, and draw a card. So it definitely helps for Penetrate. And then we play four copies of Rune Staff. Uh, Rune Staff, I'm addicted to this weapon, I don't know why. It is a, a quick cost, pay one gauge. You do not have to pay the life cost, cast cost of cards you have with great spell, and act. Rest this card, if you do, put the top card of your deck into your gauge. Um, this card single-handedly makes it easy to play everything in this deck. I mean, getting this early is awesome. You you basically you generate two gauge per turn, and, and you get more if you have the other guy out. Damage control with Iowa Dog is so you have an extra gauge. You only need two gauge to play most of the cards in this deck. Um, so this is the deck profile. Um, I'm a little unhappy with it at the moment. It's definitely my favorite deck. I'm definitely gonna go back to a Ragnarok variant of this deck, using kind of the play testing that I have with this current build. I mostly put this up there for the people who are interested in the deck profile. And I guess for other notes, um, there are cards, I mean there are th aspects of the deck that would probably help it out. Um, weapons definitely I could see being useful, I think, but I think weapons is more of a hero build just because they have access to a couple more movers that are easier to justify playing. Also the new set spell, that when you link attack with a hero might help this deck out. I mean it's only has it has access to the Soul Guard hero and Iowa Doll being heroes right now, so I can't really justify it right now. But another card that is absolutely amazing that came out is this great spell. I don't know how you say this. Walter's stat. You only cast this at the end of the first battle during your opponent's turn. Uh cast cost, pay two gauge, pay two life, zero if you have rune staff counter the attack phase ends so this is really good for it's a, I think it's probably a better defensive play than holy grail in some cases the gauge cost is less than fantastic but I think this kind of a card has some potential going on in the future anyway you guys that's my deck profile for legend world asgard uh, leave a comment down below if you have questions experiences are more than welcome I'm trying to make this deck better because I'd love to use it in a regional setting, but I, I highly doubt it right now. And uh, look me up on Twitter. I mean, I say things every once in a while. Unfortunately, I'm, I'm trying to still be better about that. But uh, anyway, thanks for watching.